Welcome to our journey through the world of Native American crafts. The Artist Gallery is a co-op of different artists who are able to sell their art through the gallery. A volunteer tells us how the art has evolved in the last 25 years. We each work, we pay rent to be here for each space that we're in. The art has evolved. I think in the early years it was more original paintings. And now, uh, of course, there's a lot of variation with the pottery and the jewelry. One of those artists who is involved with the Arts Gallery is metalsmith Tom Yassi. We visited him at his home and workshop in Flagstaff. I'm a member of that co-op, so in that way I'm allowed to, to um, display and sell my jewelry there. Tom wants to make more than just jewelry. It must have a special meaning. I try to make art, wearable art. Uh, some people just make a piece of ring, but I want uh, jewelry that will stand on its own, uh, um, a piece, like a piece of art. And I make all kinds of jewelry. I polish uh, a lot of stones. I cut them and polish them all myself. Do all the metal work in here, uh, from polishing to finishing to soldering to melting. Then you got your rollers and all the equipment that I have set up. So. Tom Yassi has discovered a special way to know if a stone is of good quality. Lick it. <laughs> Clean it off and then you look at it and say, oh, okay, look, look, that's nice. Then you lick it and then it'll show you what it's going to look like when you polish it. It's going to look like that when you polish it. Jewelry making runs in the family. Not only Tom is involved in this process, his son Steve and Yassi is also a metalsmith, but they have different styles, even though they still help and collaborate with each other. Um, I think one of the most iconic things that um, are between me and my dad is our uh, 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 shared bow guards that we have. He made me um, a bow guard and I made him one. And you can see directly how our styles are very much different, but how much they influence each other from uh, our works and how much input we put into each other. Sometimes you'll, you'll look at it and say, yeah, that's not going to work. <laughs> Or sometimes like, oh yeah, that'll work, try this or try this instead of this or, you know, that's how we usually shoot ideas off each other and get each other's opinion on certain pieces. Native American jewelry is also sold next to the road towards Sedona. Velma Wilson tells us more about her motivation to sell a variety of pots, jewelry and sculptures. I rely on a lot of these artisans and I know they do very good work and it, a lot of it's trust too. You know, we have a trust basis and um, their family, neighbors, you know, people. I've known a lot of them maybe like 20 years. She says that she has several reasons for why she sells her merchandise on the side of the road. Right now it's a way, it's survival. Like if I don't make anything, I don't make money. But years before that, it was just kind of fun, you know, a way to hang out with my grandma, you know, for me to be close to her. And my grandma was a rebel. <laughs> so, but um, now it's like I have to keep busy. And um, just, it's a way of survival, I guess. Like you have to go to work and if you don't, you don't get paid. So that's basically how it is now. We hope that you enjoyed our journey through the world of Native American crafts. For Arizona, I'm Naomi.